Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss and continue the clinical presentations topic. And if you don't want to miss this series of case presentations and diagnosis, uh, you can subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Number 16. Patient presents with confusion, ophthalmoplegia, nystagmus, ataxia, and who is also a chronic alcoholic. The most common vitamin deficiency which we can see in chronic alcoholics is vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency. These symptoms, uh, especially confusion, ophthalmoplegia and ataxia and nystagmus are uh, leading to a diagnosis that is Wernicke's encephalopathy. Vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency leads to impaired glucose breakdown and uh, when there is a deficiency of uh, thiamine, there will be decreased glucose uh, breakdown. If you give uh, glucose even before correcting the thiamine deficiency it leads to worsening of ATP depletion. Vitamin B1 or thiamine it acts as cofactor for branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase, alpha fetoclutarate uh, dehydrogenase, pyruvate dehydrogenase and also transketolase. The cofactor is called as thiamine pyrophosphate. Wernicke's encephalopathy is an acute reversible and life-threatening condition. The major symptoms of Wernicke's encephalopathy are confusion, ophthalmoplegia, nystagmus and ataxia and you can remember this as corona. Increased RPC transketolase activity is an indicator of thiamine deficiency. Number 17. The patient presents with confusion, ophthalmoplegia, nystagmus and ataxia along with confabulation and memory loss. The main difference between the first one and first question and this question is that there is confabulation and memory loss. This definitely gives us the diagnosis that is Korsakoff syndrome. The important catchy points in this question are confabulation and memory loss in a chronic alcoholic with the other symptoms similar to Wernicke's encephalopathy. 18. Patient having dilated cardiomyopathy, high output heart failure, edema and is also a chronic alcoholic with malnutrition. Whenever you see there is a chronic alcoholic with mal malnutrition, the most common vitamin deficiency in them will be thiamine. This condition is called as wet beriberi and we also have dry beriberi which involves uh, nerves mainly causing polyneuropathy and muscle wasting. Number 19. The patient is having burning feet syndrome. The burning feet syndrome is uh, characteristically due to vitamin B5 deficiency that is pantothenic acid. Antothenic acid is a cofactor for uh, fatty acid synthase and also coenzyme A that is acyl transferases. The, the other notable clinical features of this pantothenic acid deficiency are dermatitis, enteritis, alopecia and adrenal insufficiency. Because of this adrenal insufficiency, the person has burning feet sensation and distal paresthesias which are called as burning feet syndrome. Number 20. The patient is having dermatitis, dementia and diarrhea. I think all of you must know this is a triad of pellagra that is 3 Ds dermatitis, dementia and diarrhea. Pellagra is caused due to vitamin B3 deficiency that is niacin. Vitamin B3 is also called as niacin or nicotinic acid. It is derived from tryptophan with the help of B2 and B6 vitamins. The cofactors of niacin are present in the form of NAD plus and NADPH. The clinical manifestations we can see in uh, niacin deficiency are glossitis, diarrhea, dementia and dermatitis along with a uh, castle's necklace which is a collar rash due to the sun exposure. The rash can be seen only in the sun exposed areas. Castle's necklace is also called as broad collar rash. Uh, pellagra is also seen not only due to ni niacin deficiency, it also seen in other conditions such as heart nerves disease and also malignant carcinoid syndrome. Uh, let me also quickly tell you what happens if there is an excess of niacin. This condition is called as podagra, deficiency is called as pellagra and uh, excess is called as podagra. The clinical manifestations seen in podagra are facial flushing, hyperglycemia and hyperuricemia. The treatment of uh, pellagra is uh, supplementation of niacin and high protein diet. 21. There is a case of swollen gums, mucosal bleeding, poor wound healing, petechiae and corkscrew hairs. The first and foremost diagnosis that should come to our mind when you see swollen gums, mucosal bleeding and poor wound healing is vitamin C deficiency which is also called as scurvy. The vitamin C is an antioxidant and it helps in iron absorption. 
by converting Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus and hydroxylation of proline and lysine also occurs due to the presence of ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is also required for conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine. The major clinical manifestations of vitamin C deficiency are swollen gums, mucosal bleeding, poor wound healing, petechiae, coarse screw hairs, anemia, hemarthrosis and decreased immune response and this vitamin C deficiency is precipitated by tea and toast diet. Let's quickly see the symptoms of excess vitamin C. They are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue and uh, accumulation of uh, calcium oxalate crystals. The one other important uh, uh, bit about uh, vitamin C is that it is used to treat methemoglobinemia. Uh, in methemoglobinemia, it is used to convert Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. 22. There is a child with bow legs, bone pain and muscle weakness. This definitely suggests rickets, that is vitamin D deficiency in children called as rickets. In adults, it is called as osteomalacia. The vitamin D which we get from the plant sources is called as D2, that is ergocalciferol, and which we get from animal sources is called as D3, that is cholecalciferol. The D3, that is cholecalciferol, which we get from animal sources, is converted to 25 hydroxy. D3 in the liver and then it is converted to 1,25 dihydroxy D3 in the kidneys. And this final product that is 1,25 dihydroxy D3 is useful in uh, increasing the calcium absorption from the gut and also phosphate absorption and increases bone, mineraliza bone mineralization at low levels. When there is a high concentration, it leads to bone resorption. The clinical manifestations of rickets in children are genuvarum or genuvalgum and it may also be genuvarum in one leg and genuvalgum in one leg called as uh, windswept legs followed by bone pain, muscle weakness and also hypocalcemic tetany. Coming to the symptoms of uh, excess vitamin D are hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, loss of appetite, stupor and uh, this uh, excess vitamin D is seen in most commonly in granulomatous diseases due to calcifications. 23rd, there is a case of uh, hemorrhagic disease of newborn with increased uh, prothrombin time and increased APTT. Whenever there is a hemorrhagic manifestations in a newborn, the first and foremost uh, thought that should occur to our mind should be vitamin K deficiency. Vitamin K is synthesized by intestinal microbiota. Uh, in newborns, the intestine or the gut of the newborns is sterile. There are no bacteria. So there will be vitamin K deficiency in newborn. As a result, we'll give vitamin K injections uh, at birth to all the children. Vitamin K exists in various forms uh, such as phytomenadione, phylloquinone, phytonadione, and menadione. Vitamin K it uh, activates epoxide reductase and it also acts as cofactor for gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid, which helps in blood clotting. The vitamin K dependent clotting factors are. 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C and protein S. Vitamin K is not present in the breast milk. As a result, vitamin K injection is given to all the newborns at birth. In vitamin K deficiency, there is increased PT and increased APTT, whereas the bleeding time is normal. And vitamin K deficiency can also occur due to prolonged use of broad-spectrum antibiotics. 24th, there is a child with intellectual disability, musty body odor, hypopigmented skin and eczema. The musty body odor and hypopigmented skin should point us towards our diagnosis that is phenylketonuria. It is an autosomal recessive disorder which occurs due to deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase. The other cause of uh, phenylketonuria may also be due to tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency because tetrahydrobiopterin acts as a cofactor for PAH. Due to the deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase, the phenylalanine uh, degradation does not happen and there is accumulation of uh, phenylalanine which is eventually converted by alternate pathways into phenyl ketones which are excreted uh, from the body through urine. The phenyl ketones are phenyl lactate, phenyl acetate and phenyl pyruvate. Let us see about phenylalanine embryopathy. It is nothing but when there is increased levels of phenylalanine in the pregnant patients, with uh, untreated phenylketonuria, it can cause fetal growth restriction, microcephaly, intellectual disability and congenital heart defects. It can be prevented with uh, dietary measures. As it is an autosomal recessive condition, 
uh, the screening should be done after 2 to 3 days after the birth because it will be normal uh, in the initial 2 to th uh, 3 days because of the maternal enzyme which is present during the fetal life the findings which can be seen in fetal uh, phenylketonuria patients are intellectual disability microcephaly seizures hypopigmented skin eczema and musty body odor and also musty urine this musty urine order is due to the uh, disorder in the degradation or metabolism of aromatic amino acids. Coming to the treatment, we have to decrease the phenylalanine levels in the diet and also increase the tyrosine levels uh, by giving uh, soy products, chicken, fish and milk etc. And we should also give tetrahydrobiopterin supplementation in tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency. These patients should avoid the artificial sweetener called as aspartame because it, uh, it contains phenylalanine. 25th. There is a child with bluish black connective tissue, ear cartilage and sclera. Urine turns black on prolonged exposure to air. The most important catchy point in this question is that urine turns black on uh, exposure to air. It is seen in alkaptonuria. Alkaptonuria, it is a homogenetic uh, oxidase deficiency. It is a congenital deficiency in the degradative, uh, degradative pathway of tyrosine to fumarate. As a result, the pigment, uh, the pigment forming homogenetic acid buildups in the tissue, which leads to the discoloration of the urine and also the tissues such as cartilage and sclera. It is an autosomal recessive condition and it is usually benign. Findings which we can see in Alkaptonuria patients are bluish black connective tissue, ear cartilage, and sclera. These all together called as ochronosis, and the urine turns black on exposure to air. They may have debilitating arthralgias uh, because the homogenetic acid is, is toxic to the cartilages. 26th, there is a case with myopathy, hypotonia, exercise intolerance with the infantile hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The most of the symptoms suggest that it is a glycogen storage disorder but the one main thing which points to the diagnosis of Pompe's disease is infantile hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Pompe disease is a type 2 glycogen storage disorder and which is due to the deficiency of lysosomal acid alpha-1,4 glucosidase deficiency or acid maltase deficiency along with alpha-1,6 glucosidase activity. The Pompe disease affects heart, liver and also muscle. Seventh. There is an infant with moderate hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly, and normal blood lactate levels having cardiomyopathy. In glycogen storage disorders, uh, severe hypoglycemia is seen in von Gerke's disease, whereas moderate hypoglycemia is seen in Cori's disease, that is, uh, debranching enzyme deficiency. It is a type 3 glycogen storage disorder. The Cori's disease is similar to von Gerke's disease but it has milder symptoms and normal blood lactate levels whereas in von Gerke's disease there will be increased blood lactate levels. The Cori's disease can also lead to cardiomyopathy. There is accumulation of lemidrextrin like structures uh, in cytoplasm in the Cori's disease. It is due to the deficiency of debranching enzyme that is alpha 1,6 glucosidase and 4 alpha D transferase. 28th. The patient presents with painful muscle cramps, myoglobinuria with strenuous exercise and arrhythmia from electrolyte abnormalities. A glycogen storage disorder which mainly affects muscles is McArdle's disease. It is a skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase deficiency. It is a type 5 glycogen storage disorder. Due to the deficiency of myophosphorylase, there will be increased glycogen in the muscle but the muscle cannot break it down. So there will be painful muscle cramps and myoglobinuria that is red urine with strenuous exercise and arrhythmias. There is also second wind phenomenon uh, noted uh, during exercise that is due to increased muscular blood flow. The skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase deficiency is characterized by flat venous lactate curve with normal rise in ammonia levels during exercise. Generally, the blood glucose levels are unaffected in uh, McArdle's disease. 29th, a child presents with progressive neurodegeneration, developmental delay, hyperreflexia, hyperacusis, and cherry red spot on macula. Let us first see the differential diagnosis of cherry red spot on macula. They are Tay Sachs disease, Neiman Pick disease, Sandhoff disease, gangliosidosis that is GM1 and GM2 gangliosidosis. Farber's disease and also metachromatic leukodystrophy followed by central retinal artery occlusion and uh, it is also seen in various drugs such as quinine, carbon monoxide, dapsone, methanol and intravitreal gentamicin. Tay-Sachs disease is a lysosomal storage disorder which comes under spingolipidosis. It is an autosomal recessive condition.
The cherry-red spot on the macula is due to the lipid accumulation in the ganglion cell layer. There will be accumulation of GM2 gangliocytes uh, in the Tay-Sachs disease. The major differentiating point between Tay-Sachs and the neiman pick disease is that there is no heptosplenomegaly in the Tay-Sachs disease. 30. There is a child with progressive neurodegeneration, developmental delay, hepatomegaly and splenomegaly which is to be noted here along with foam cells and cherry red spot on macula. The symptoms suggest it is a lysosomal storage disorder because of foam cells and uh, we can differentiate it from the Tay-Sachs disease because it has hepatosplenomegaly and the Tay-Sachs does not have hepatosplenomegaly. So the diagnosis here is a neiman pick disease. neiman pick disease is due to the deficiency of sphingomyelinase and the sphingomyelin accumulates in the body. It is an autosomal recessive condition. The foam cells are nothing but the lipid laden macrophages. 31. There is a child with hepatosplenomegaly, pancytopenia, osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of femur head, bone crisis and crumpled tissue paper like macrophages. The main catchy point here is the hepatosplenomegaly and crumpled tissue paper like macrophages. The diagnosis is Gorgeous disease. Gorgeous disease is also a lysosomal storage disorder which is due to the deficiency of glucocerebrosidase that is beta glucosidase. It is the most common type of lysosomal storage disorder and uh, it, it has autosomal recessive inheritance. The Gorgeous cells that is crumpled tissue paper like cells are nothing but the lipid laden macrophages. The treatment of Gorgeous disease is by administration of recombinant glucocerebrosidase. 32nd, the patient is having a trial of episodic peripheral neuropathy, hypohydrosis and angiokeratomas. These trial of features are the early manifestations of Fabry's disease. Fabry's disease is a lysosomal storage disorder which is X-linked recessive that is different from all other lysosomal storage disorders which are autosomal recessive. It is due to the deficiency of alpha-galactosidase A and the ceramide trihexoside accumulates in the body because of the deficiency of this alpha-galactosidase A. The late manifestations of Fabry's disease are progressive renal failure and also cardiovascular disease. 33rd, the patient presents with Achilles tendon xanthoma and corneal arcus having accelerated atherosclerosis. The Achilles tendon xanthomas and corneal arcus are most commonly seen in familial hypercholesterolemia and this familial hypercholesterolemia is a type 2 familial dyslipidemia and it is an autosomal dominant condition. It is due to absent or defective LDL receptors or defective ApoB100. The four major types of familial dyslipidemias are type 1 that is hyperchylomicronemia, type 2 hypercholesterolemia, type 3 dysbeta lipoproteinemia and type 4 that is hypertriglyceridemia. This uh, type 2 hypercholesterolemia is further divided into 2A and 2B. In 2A, it is due to absent or defective LDL receptors, so there will be accumulation of uh, LDL and cholesterol. In 2B, there is defective ApoB100. As a result, in 2B, LDL, cholesterol and uh, VLDL also accumulates. The accelerated atherosclerosis in this question, it means that the patients may have MI even before the age of 20. That's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Let us meet another day with uh, another set of important clinical presentations and their discussions. Thank you.